you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you a really righteous slave of His, then you have to fix yourself first. Babe? Is everything okay? Hey guys, quick no intro. So this is how you join our family here and this is how you do it. If you want to do it, check it out. Also, we're on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for the support. Peace. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my channel. I am Shekha and today I'm going to talk about marriage and how to prepare yourself for marriage in Islam. Before I get into that, you guys, I just checked out my YouTube stats today, which I never do, but I just realized that 80% of you guys who watch my videos haven't even subscribed. So if you're seeing this, go click the subscribe button right now and I'll be super happy. <laughs> I'm making this video because by popular demand, and uh, before I get started, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, all praise and glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And every risk and everything that we have in life is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we could not have achieved anything by ourselves. It's very important that we know that. I did a live earlier today on Instagram and I kept getting like phone calls while I was doing the live and I was talking about marriage. So the sound went off and when I tried to come back, I didn't save the old one. So I'm here on YouTube doing it. So... For you guys. As Muslims, we need to focus on our own relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as when I came to Islam, I was like, okay, now I want to get married because I thought, you know, being a reaver, I thought it was hard to be practicing alone and to do everything alone. Being Muslim is a lifestyle and everything that I did, I did it alone. And um, I was really, really looking for a companionship. Looking back, I wasn't ready at all because I, I didn't have my deen in order. My own Iman wasn't where it needed to be. So what I did was I started to work on myself because I thought, and I don't remember where I saw this, but somebody said, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you a really righteous slave of His, then you have to fix yourself first. Babe, is everything okay? Sorry, my husband's just killing a cucumber. He's making tacos. It's okay, baby. Just go ahead. I just told them what you're doing, so I think it's fine. So I was like, okay, I need to work on my own relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When my husband, for the first time, tried to reach out to me, was on Instagram DM. And it was about six months before I actually saw the DM. And how I know that is because one day, after we got married and stuff, I was like, babe, let me see your phone. I want to, to get some screenshots of the beginning of our uh, conversation because I didn't have it on my phone. So I asked him uh, to show me our conversation on DM. When I looked, I seen, and I was like, what? Why didn't you mention this to me? But he thought that I'd already seen him and ignored it because six months, he actually tried to write to me. He tried to talk to me. And I don't ever remember seeing that, which is crazy because I only had about like three, four, five hundred followers maximum on Instagram so how I didn't see that I don't know you know I was all up in my DM all the time but I didn't see it subhanallah and I think that if I did see that then we wouldn't have been where we were today we wouldn't have married got married as fast and everything wouldn't have been as easy because I wasn't ready and here he wasn't ready either you know to to be the Muslim man he needed to be in order for me to accept him as a husband I started to work on my own relationship with Allah here is the things that I did to prepare myself for marriage I needed to fix my relationship with Allah so the first thing that I did was keep up with my Sunnah prayers so before Fajr before Duhur after Duhur and so on and so forth and most importantly, when it comes to prayers for me, in addition to the obligatory prayers, I prayed tahajjud. Every single night, I would wake up and pray tahajjud. And I would also fast sunnah Mondays and Thursdays. I would increase in my good deeds. For example, giving, uh, just being a better friend, being a better daughter, um, helping out my with my mom, and different things, just increasing in the good deeds. And... Um, I would also start reading Quran at least 10 to 20 pages each and every day and to try and learn the Arabic tajweed of things of how to pronounce words from the Quran and stuff like that and started small but it was important that I read and so that that kept me away from a lot of sin I ain't gonna lie reading Quran and constantly praying sunnah prayers really helped me to avoid a lot of sin 
So that was major for me. And all the time I had the intention of bettering myself. And also one major thing, uh, a good friend of mine, a sister of mine who lives in um, the UK, she went to perform Umrah with her family. And um, I think about, I don't know, a couple weeks, a month tops before uh, my husband and I finally connected. Her name is Mariam. I said, can you please make dua for me specifically in the harem by the Kaaba? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant me a merciful spouse and soon. She made that dua for me. When my husband finally wrote me, I already had a routine. I was honoring myself the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given me the status to be a Muslim woman. And it's like, we need to understand who we are. I didn't even let this guy touch me to shake my hand. I don't let this guy get out of line with talking to me or nothing. Like, he is, mashallah, he was very righteous himself. Not this to say that I was the one, but I knew who I was in Islam and I was safe uh, and secure in my, in my status and role as a Muslim woman and I needed to be firm on that and I knew that if for the sake of Allah I acted the way that I needed to act in a, in a righteous manner, in a pious manner, then Allah would give me what's best for me because if a man wants something from me that I can't give him that's not halal, then he's not going to be the man for me. He was, mashallah, super righteous, super pious. He was lowering his gaze. We both were really working really, really hard lowering our gazes. And it was just an energy thing. And we met each other, I think, five, six times tops. I think five times. Um, and we were never alone. And then that, like, literally two months within, we didn't know each other from before, nothing. Two months between hello to nikah, husband and wife, done. And then after that, we got to know each other. Uh, we didn't know anything about each other, to be honest with you. And that doesn't work for everybody. You know, that's, for all intents and purposes, a arranged marriage. But it worked out great for us. A lot of young sisters write me in total despair, which I understand. Because I don't think that the feeling of wanting companionship and courtship and feeling lonely is exclusive to 25 plus years old. I think... Everyone can feel that from the age of maturity. When people write me 18, 19, 20, Sister Shekha, please give me some advice. Like, I'm trying to get married. I didn't meet my husband until I was 27 years old. We're 28. We've been married for a year, alhamdulillah. But we didn't meet each other until we were 27. So don't rush. Whenever Allah wants something to happen, that's when it will happen. So my best advice is to do those things that I just uh, mentioned that I did and whatever else works for you, try it out. I truly don't believe that somebody really, really wants something unless they have prayed the hajjud at least once or tried to make a habit of it. Like try to do it every day for a week and just see how your life will change. That's all I wanted to say. To understand one thing that my mom said to me all the time that I didn't even, it went over my head until I was like, oh, that's what you meant and that is so true. If something is meant for you if allah has ordained something for you it'll come to you even if it is beneath two mountains but if it's something that's not meant for you it'll slip away from you even if it is between your two lips on that note i will end this video thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate every single one who writes comments and dms i try to keep up and answer everybody um, it does not go unnoticed. I read every single thing that y'all say and I love and appreciate you guys for taking the time and to making the effort and I really really do appreciate it. So Jazakallah khair. And uh, guys if you're not subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel right now and uh, be a part of this family because we have a lot more fun things to come inshallah. And I try to just do my best to give y'all what y'all want. Like I always ask on Instagram, what do y'all want to see? So if you have any suggestions and if there's something particularly you want me and my husband to do or me to do or talk about, please let me know in the comments, inshallah. All right. Barakallah feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So remember to check out our description box for the links of our Patreon and how to join our family. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate you. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching and that was all we had for now. Let us know what more content you guys want down in the comment section and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel if you already haven't. Love you guys so much. Thank you for your support. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.